Wow, fantastic, fantastic, beautiful, Sayed, um, Sayed Jalal. Really, really appreciate your time. It's, it's so nice to start off the day. It is. With... I really do enjoy the mornings with yeah, Morning Barakah when yeah. we have such a blessed uh, start. And, Especially yeah. when it's the recitation of the yeah. Quran. It's really, really Definitely. great. So I hope the viewers are enjoying it as well. Yeah, so from Quran, we're going to now be focusing on du'as and supplications and how to really speak to, to, to um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here to, to kind of shed light on some of the supplications and, and the du'as or the, even the ziyaras that we don't really know much about. Um, is Ibrahim Al Ansari. Ibrahim, salam alaikum. Alaikum as salam. How are you? Everything okay? Alhamdulillah, how about yourself? Good, thank you. Thank you. Well. thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much for having me once again. Yeah. So t today's a Friday dua. Yes, Last Friday dua. Yeah. Friday dua. Of course, um, it's a Friday today. Mm -hmm. um, a beautiful way to start the day is mm -hmm. through supplication, through making a closer bond, a closer connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's Whenever we start the day by calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are saying that we are sta starting the day in your mercy. Mm. We are starting the day for you to protect us. Mm. It's like, for example, when um, a young uh, person wakes up and he or she goes to their parents in the morning and kisses them before leaving the house mm. and kisses them when they come back and kisses them before they go to sleep. It's the same thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You speak to him when you wake up. You speak to him when you're wanting to leave the house, which yeah. is because there's du'as for that. You speak to them when you're um, on a journey, there's du'as for that. You speak to him before you go to sleep. You mm -hmm. speak to him. This is the beautiful thing about the school of Ahlul Bayt. Mm. There is a du'a for every single little action, even mm. for entering the house, for going to the bathroom, mm. for washing, for whatever you may think of, even in wudu. There are specific du'as for every step in wudu, for washing the face, for, wash, uh, for washing the arms, for wiping the head, for wiping the feet. And every single one of them is just so beautiful because the imams tend to put the supplication in such a way where they include lessons and show us how to live our life as well as making sure that there is always a, a special bond between us and the Creator. And they also show us, don't they, the etiquette of speaking to God. Because yes. I, I have so many people often saying, well, you know, I just struggle to know how to approach yes. God. This is God. And yet, so <coughs> even if they're not from the school of Ahl Bayt, introducing them to the du'as yeah. um, of Ahl Bayt is a really nice way to sort of break that barrier that people have. And it's a shame that that exists in people because Definitely. God is, you know, he says, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. So to build that relationship is so important, isn't it? No, definitely. The thing is, any important person, there's, there's always a difference in, in the way you, sp you speak to anyone, yeah. be it your son, your daughter, be it your brother, sister, your parents, yeah. your uncles, your grandfather, and then there's the highest. There's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Now, when we speak to him, once there is speaking with respect and once there is speaking while being taught from the best, yeah. there's, there's, there's a difference. Because once I think I am respectful in the way I am speaking, just because this is how I have grown up, for example, mm. um, I have been told that this is okay. As we know, the same way I can speak, for example, in my Arab culture, if I go to a different culture and speak the mm. way I do at home, they might find it rude. Yeah. Mm. Ahlul Bayt alayhim wassalam, are the closest to the culture, let's say, of mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they tell us exactly how to address Him Almighty. Beautifully said. Um, this is a Friday dua, because it's a Friday, I'd really <coughs> like you to recite it, and then perhaps Inshallah. you can talk about yeah. what, what it means. And, Inshallah, yeah. definitely. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم, Allah salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. الحمد لله الأول قبل الإنشاء والإحياء والآخر بعد فناء الأشياء العليم الذي لا ينسى من ذكره لا ينسى من ذكره ولا ينقص من شكره ولا يخيب من دعاه ولا يقطع رجاء من رجاه اللهم إني أشهد أشهدك وكفى بك شهيدا وأشهد جميع ملائكتك وسكان سماواتك وحملتي عرشك 
ومن بعثت من أنبيائك ورسلك وأنشأت من أصناء في خلقك إني أشهد أنك أنت الله لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك ولا عديل ولا خلف لقولك ولا تبديل وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله عبدك ورسولك أدى ما حملته إلى العباد وجاهد في الله عز وجل حق الجهاد وأنه بشر بما هو حق من الثواب وأنذر بما هو صدق من العقاب اللهم ثبتني على دينك ما أحييتني ولا تزغ قلبي بعد إذ هديتني وهب لي من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب صل على محمد وآل محمد واجعلني من أتباعه وشيعته واحشرني في زمرته ووفقني ليداء فرض الجمعات وما أوجبت علي فيها من الطاعات وقسمت لأهلها من العطاء في يوم الجزاء إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله محمد Is this um, the whole Friday dua? This, this is the whole extra? Friday dua mm. One of the be beauties of these daily duas is that all, they're all short mm. and um, concise yeah. and easy to read um, and every single day of the week has a dua like this as well as a ziyar. Mm. So ziyar of whom? So on Fridays, the f uh, we s uh, Friday is the day of Imam Al Mahdi. So on a Friday, we perform ziyara. This is a specific ziyara for Friday. Is the ziyara of Imam Al Mahdi? Mm. This dua itself is from Imam Al Sajjad, alayhi mm. <coughs> And uh, in this dua. He starts off with Tawheed. He starts off with talking about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he moves on to um, his belief in Muhammad. Uh, because our religion stands on two. The belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the belief in his messenger. Mm. Of course, there's the Quran and there's thing else. However, <coughs> in terms of the Shahada itself. So he's performing his Shahada. And then after which, he goes back to making dua for himself, O oh Allah, do not allow me to go astray, O oh Allah, make me stay steadfast on this religion. And then of course, he moves back, because the result of being steadfast is to be of those who follow Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. and his true message, which leads us to the Imams. Yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. And in terms of, because um, it's really fascinating <coughs> to know that there's a, there's a dua or a supplication for every single day. Yeah. Um, this I, I'm assuming there's more, like there's 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 a specific dua and a ziyara for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The yes. Rest of the yes. So th so there is uh, the ziyara, for example, of Monday, um, which we've been through, uh, is actually for Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, because it is their day. Mm. And then you have a dua for that day as well. On Tuesday. There's a dua and there's a ziyar on Wednesday, etc. Mm -hmm. for every single day. And like I said at the start of this um, episode, that it is always about when waking up, you're making that connection with Allah subhanahu wa yeah, ta'ala. Exactly. You're telling him, I am going to start my day at your mercy with your blessings. And this is how I want to start today. But when, don't you think there's already, for example, dua al sabah that takes <coughs> care of that specific need in the morning why, yeah. why the need to do dua sabah and then dua this and then ziyara this and then dua that seems to be a lot you see with dua sabah for example dua sabah as beautiful as it is it is called dua sabah the dua of the morning yeah. inshallah maybe if we get the chance to go through it on one of the episodes the it is the recommended time is actually after salatul fajr 
mm. and inshallah we'll get into detail if we have an episode on that. Mm. Whereas this Friday dua, there is no recommended time for it. Doesn't right. say do it in the morning. Mm. Doesn't say do it in the afternoon. That this is a general dua for the day. I said it is best to kickstart your day like this because of the beauty of it, because mm. of mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mornings. Mm. So many of us, especially uh, living in the West, we wake up for Salat al-Fajr, then we have another one or two hours of sleep yeah. before we head off to work, school, whatever it may be. So maybe uh, Dua al-Sabah, one can recite after Salat al-Fajr, yeah. mm. then once you're waking up and you're ready to go to um, your normal routine, routine yeah. we can recite this Dua as an yeah. example. I mean, you could be on the train, couldn't you? Commuting somewhere, and yeah. you could Definitely. be reading yeah. that. So Definitely. It's, um, it's, it's a beautiful way to start the day, because actually I was thinking that not everyone has that time, and you know, if you feel overwhelmed, and even if you get a couple of these in the week, Friday's obviously <coughs> the day that is blessed for Muslims, and it would be beautiful to start, you know, at some point to recite this. Um, yes. But again, it's as much as we can do, isn't it? Um, obviously, a lot of people have busy schedules, so not to feel overwhelmed that oh, I'm not getting the list of du'as done. No, no, of course. You see, you see with du'as, they're not wajib. Yeah. Yeah. Du'as are mustahab. They're, they're, they're recommended. They're favorable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we cannot get them in, then we can't. Yeah. But if we can, there is unbelievable amounts of blessings. Therefore, there is no, there is no wajib act to it. But to get these kinds of blessings... Yeah. To allow your soul to overlook such beautiful words, to make you see with with these du'as, there are unbelievable amounts of blessings, yeah. and and I I know I keep repeating that sentence, but it's the truth of it. Yeah. Yeah. Here I I just learned about tawhid. Here when when I first started reading the du'a after praising Allah subhanahu wa taala, mm -hmm. I know that He is the first. Like here it says, al awwal qabl al insha' wal ihya. And then al akhir ba'da fana al ashya, and who shall continue to exist after all things have perished. Mm. Now these are lessons for me. This mm. is me. Uh, this is the Imam teaching me about the attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then he carries on al alim al ladhi la yansa min dhikrah, the all knowing, the one who who will not forget, the one who remembers him. Mm. And here we're remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the Imam is telling us. That part of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that if you remember him, he will never forget you. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, and I, w I was just going to say, it makes such a difference to someone's day yeah. if you start it off by actually connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. By just as, sim as simple as dua as this, <coughs> it makes a major, major difference to the rest of your day. A lot of Definitely. people, again, you're right, they get so embroiled with the, the, the hustle and bustle of the world and mm. the commuting and everything. They're probably watching a series or... Um, you know, maybe listening to something or whatever it is on the way to work or even thinking too much about work but mm. if you just want to take a step back it's the morning it's still dark especially in the UK yeah. it's still dark um, you leave the house I don't know it depends on what time you guys leave the house I leave around 7 yeah 7am 7, 7 so it's still dark it's about dark at 8 moment, by 7.40 yeah. 7.50 the light's out mm. um, so depending on, it's even better if you leave at 8am because the sun is just rising mm. um, and to have that that special feeling of just reciting a small dua it makes a massive massive difference to someone's Definitely. day um, I think it's, it's, it's centralising your thought process isn't it to get, always go about your day remembering God because yeah. it's not that he's absent and you know only at the times of prayer we think about yeah. Allah it's like you're saying even you see the sun you know those signs of creation could be metaphors for who you resonate with maybe you think of the imam at that time that no, you know inshallah he's shining his light on our light yeah. on our lives and there's little things that you can really um connect to and obviously this dua is it's it's a beautiful dua genuinely um yeah. you know to start your it's the the start of the week, it's the start of the you know yeah. Friday. Yeah. So yeah, having having these these du'as and always remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, especially um, in because throughout our day we go through different kinds mm -hmm. of uh, trials. Mm -hmm. um, one of, like some of them is uh, seeing haram, listening yeah. haram, um, being around haram. Yeah. Now, so having this constant God consciousness, yes. remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala constantly. That will always help us by refraining our eyesight, our, our hearing from these haram acts. And that is the best way to get to a word that we call taqwa. And taqwa mm. is the only way that we can get the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, inna ikramakum 'inda Allah atqaqum. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. you so much. I'd love to recap 
um, with your permission, Zara, I've, yes, take, I've taken ahead. notes. Um, just to recap. I wouldn't so want to deny you. Yeah. <laughs> <all the> effort. <laughs> it's, my, it's my special moment of the, of the, of the, um, the segment. Um, so I, the, the, the du'a that you've chosen was Friday du'a. It's actually yeah. called du'a Jum'ah? Yeah. That's the, yeah. So du'a Yom Jum'ah. Du'a Yom Jum'ah. So the du'a of Friday. Yeah. Um, narrated by Imam Sajjad. Yeah. Um, so it first starts off with um, Tawheed, yeah. um, and then it goes on to him testifying to um, the, the oneness of God and that Muhammad is the messenger, yeah. uh, his grandfather is the messenger. Um, but then it goes on to praying for himself. Yeah. Um, so then he asks, um, what were the words? I know it down. Muhammad. Ah, وَلَا تَزَقَلْبِي بَعْدَ هَدَيْتَنِي وَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ For example. Yeah. Yeah, so it goes, goes on to pray, praying for himself. Um, and something that you mentioned as a key takeaway, I think, with, from what, 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 what you guys were having discussion about in the beginning of the program, was these are, are, are ways to speak to God, but you were saying that this is you know, speaking to God from the way of the Ahlul Bayt spoke to God. Yeah. And that's the most perfect way of, mm. of, of, of speaking to God. I yeah. think I've brought everything yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about it. That's about it, right? Yeah. Anything Definitely. else you wanted to add? No. No? I think we need to move on to okay. our... Brilliant. <laughs> Rahim, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, really, 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 really appreciate God it. God bless you on um, this day. And thank you very inshallah, much. to both of you. We'll see yeah. you next week. Yeah. Inshallah. Um, so after the break, we're going to be joined, or Zara is going to be joined mm. by um, uh, Barak Hussain, um, who's uh, a psychologist and a counsellor. Um, and it's going to be in the specialist segment. So please stay tuned.